it's like rustic but cottony because of the cotton <laughs> worst description ever hey y'all welcome to the suburban stitcher podcast my name is diane and today is oh my brain wants to say january it is September 16th, 2019, and I am, I have no idea what episode number this is, but it's a number, and I'm super excited to be with you today. It has been a little bit of time. Um, there have been lots of travels and lots of shows and lots of things since the last time we spoke, um, and I'm leaving in a couple of days for my next um work trip so I um, thought I just needed to absolutely make the time to podcast. Um, it was super easy to try and convince myself not to do it because of time and stuffiness still that I'm fighting and scheduling and no makeup and all the things but here we are so I hope that you're feeling well and on top of your schedule more so than I am um I I honestly should have looked to see when the last time I podcasted was but for sure I have been to Oslo and back since we spoke. And perhaps I have also been to, um, had a trunk show at the yarn store boutique in Houston. So it has definitely been a little bit of time, um, but that's okay. <laughs> That's okay. It's exciting as always to be with you. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about my travels and my trip probably towards the end of the podcast. So um, stay tuned if you would like to hear about that at the end. Um, I don't even know where to begin. I don't have any finished knitting to talk about. Um, I do have a bit, I have a hoe. Um, I finished my first sock of my Jelly Rolls socks that I'm working on out of Dragon Horde yarn in the Here's the Thing colorway. And this is some colorful eclectic in I Dream of Pink or... I believe in pink or something like that but the bright and they're both on a glitter sparkle base so this is the first sock um, I have not blocked it what I will say is that um, I don't know that I love this part around the middle of my foot I kind of thought it would be awesome to hug it but it makes the rest of the sock feel funny to me so the second one I may knit without it <laughs> <laughs> which I know is a little weird but you know who knows I need to cast on the second one because otherwise it's going to sit around for a really long time so this is a hoe um, I worked on that and then basically I have worked on two projects both of which you have not seen before um, but two projects since the last time I podcasted because I started these right before we left for Norway and then this is what I worked on basically the whole time. So the first thing is um, I cast on the Super Simple Summer Sweater by Hohi Locatelli and I am using the Called For yarn, the yarn that she used in the design, which is um, Retrosaria Mungo, I believe. Rosa Pomar Mungo, I'm not exactly sure. Rosa Pomar Mungo, and it is a 50% cotton, 50% wool. 
yeah, recycled wool and cotton yarn entirely spun from pre-consumer waste generated by Portuguese spinning mills. Um, so I am knitting it in the exact yarn that Hohe knit hers in because I just loved it so much in the exact colors and I'm knitting the size large which is typically what I do for Hohe's patterns. Um, I have had the benefit of trying on her mediums and knowing that they are too small for me but larges work just fine. So um, this is where I am so far. I am almost done with one ball of each color. So like this is from the first ball. I have th I had three balls of each color and I'm this much with the first ones. I've separated for the sleeves. I don't know if that's evident here, but I have separated for the sleeves and I have just maybe knit three or four rows since separating. I have not tried it on yet, but it seems plenty wide enough. Um, especially once it is not on this needle and it's blocked. I think it's going to be absolutely perfect. So the yarn is a really interesting um, texture. It's cotton, so it definitely has that cottony feel to it. And it's wool, not merino. So it's like rustic, but cottony because of the cotton. <laughs> worst description ever. I don't know if that makes any sense at all, but it has a really, it's like a soft rustic feel to the yarn because of that. So, um, yeah, so I think, I don't know how many, I mean, I'm just knitting it exactly. I don't anticipate doing any mods or anything. Um, I think this is a little bit cropped. Um, she just has three stripes of each color on the body. I don't know if I'll have to go into a fourth stripe of this one based on me knitting a large instead of a medium. But I just love how bold and graphic it is. I think it's going to be perfect with jeans. I feel like a cotton wool sweater is kind of perfect for Texas because it's going to be warm but still have the cotton not quite wool aspect to it. So I'm hoping that it's a little bit sweatshirty, but like a classy, tidier sweatshirt. So um, I really am enjoying this quite a lot. Um, it was perfect travel knitting because there are big, huge sections where you don't have to change colors. And it was just plain knitting. Um, I think well, I split for the sleeves once I got back home, so I didn't get that far on my trip, but it's just been really easy breezy knitting. Um, the colors, if you can see up close, the, the natural is just natural, and then this charcoal color is actually um, quite heathered looking, so it's really, just really pretty with the dimension of that gray, so. I am very excited to have this as a finished object at some point. <laughs> um, I am have not had a lot of knitting time as of late and I also have not felt very well. So I have not had the energy to knit at night. Every night basically I've been going back and laying in my bed and binging television shows and not doing a lot of knitting, which is totally fine. I feel like we all ebb and flow. Okay, so that sweater is my first big project that I've been working on. And then I started a sock. Um, and the reason I started one instead of bringing like this pair that was already started is these are top down and there's just a lot of stuff very quickly that I didn't want to have to think about. And then the other pair of socks that I have cast on is a patterned pair. And again, I wanted to be able to just knit without looking. So um, I actually started a pair of socks out of some yarn that I bought at Knit City last year. Um, what is this? 
oh that's a receipt from the hotel <laughs> um so i am using i don't know where the ball band is but this is um gauge dye works and the pattern that i'm doing is called sax point s-a-x-e p-o-i-n-t and it's by andrea rangel um the brilliant thing about gauge dye works is that all of this was part of one skein so it's like dyed it's a self-striping yarn but then it has the contrast for the toes and the heels and then there's actually a color work top like right above the cuff that will be out of these two colors and all of this was part of the same skein like she just dyes it all in one big warp which is kind of brilliant um, the only modification that I am making is that instead of doing an afterthought heel, I am knitting in a fish lips kiss heel into mine. Um, oh my gosh. So this is so beautiful. Um, I, this is like a gradient. So the blue gets darker to light and then it's getting darker again right here. And then the, the tan is light to dark. And then it's kind of change and then to light again and it's changing colors it's, it's brilliant absolutely absolutely love it it's just brilliant so this was great travel knitting i almost did not bring a sock um and then this stitch marker is from a kit that i bought last year or the year before and for the life of me i have no idea who the maker is i think it was a smaller maker but um but I thought it was really pretty with the butterfly so um I had caked up this yarn to start when I went to Galliano Island last year um last November and I ended up not starting this I started my pair of Galliano socks because I was on Galliano Island and so these have been caked up for a year almost a year and it was ready to go and so I thought that's perfect I don't have to think it's some yarn that I bought last year at Knit City so this is, feels very virtuous to have started um, knitting with some of it because I think this is maybe the only yarn that I've used so far from my Knit City haul from last year um, and it was quite quite the haul um, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the only thing I've started. Like, now that I'm really thinking about it, that's ridiculous. Um, I bought so much yarn there last year. Um, anyway, I am very excited to have started this. And then this is in my Hohe & Co. Um, BA bag, which if you are on the fence about purchasing one, um, if it is in your budget, I highly encourage you to do so because it is beyond beautifully made and I love it so much. So, and I carried this thing all over Oslo, all, all over. It was the perfect, perfect travel companion. I, like I said, I almost did not bring a sock. And then my very wise friend, Susie, Prairie Girl Susie said, you know what? You might want a purse project instead of just only bringing sweaters or shawls. And she was exactly right. So it was perfect. Um, and that is my knitting, you guys. That's it. That's all I've been working on. I, there just is not a lot. Um, I do have a project that I am desperate to start <sighs> desperate isn't even the word like I um, I it, my plan was to bring it to Knit City and cast it on not Knit City um Oslo and cast it on but I I decided not to and it's good because I just really focused on those two projects and got you know quite a bit done on both of them let me show you what I want to start so I dyed up the yarn and everything for a stone crop pullover, which is a pattern by Andrea Mowry. I have, I already had three skeins of 
um, what's this spin cycle dyed in the wool in the same it's technically the same colorway but I think honestly it's three different dye lots I have purchased it at two different times like years apart years apart um, but it almost honestly goes in a gradient so the main body of my sweater is going to be my hand dyed yarn in the pumpkin colorway which is a new color this is on my pure base which is 100% superwash merino it is um, a very similar if not exactly the same base as the magpie domestic fingering um, that is called for in the pattern because mine is 100 yards four, or 400 yards 100 grams three ply exactly like the magpie um, so I thought that that would be a good substitution and this is a custom order base that I carry in my shop I typically don't have a ton of options ready to ship in the shop but um, I'm happy to dye it up custom for you it's a base that I keep a back stock of undyed yarn just for customs so um, so pumpkin in my pure fingering and then I have the spin cycle in the payback colorway so like I said I have three skeins my size for this pattern only calls for two skeins needed but I plan on <laughs> literally does not even look like so I purchased these two at the same time they could be from the same dye lot this one was purchased like two or three years ago uh, it's much more barber pulled I don't know if tell that from there this is tons of barber pulling on this one the colors are not quite as intense on this one so um, yeah I just plan on using the parts that I like from these three skeins and I think it's gonna be really really fun I'm kind of like fussy cutting if you're a quilter I'm basically fussy cutting the hand spun in order to achieve the look that I want, which is really super great. <laughs> so I might cast this on before my trip this week. I, I have so many whips. I don't need to cast anything new on, but I'm very tempted. So we will see. Um, one thing that arrived in the mail that I'm very excited about and can't wait to find the perfect project for is I purchased two skeins of this I'm almost positive it's Dearis 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 I heard him say it at DFW Dearis Dearis made um, and this is his chaotic colorway on his single ply merino fingering. So this will be fun to find a perfect project for it. Three skeins of fingering weight yarn. Um, and then of course, while in Norway, I purchased a few things. Um, I really, as I think a lot of people are right now, like everyone, it seems to be very garment and sweater focused. And I um, purchased some yarn while I was in Norway. So let's back up a little bit. I went to Oslo, Norway um, with my husband and he was going for a work trip. He was presenting a, um, at a conference, um, the third annual European Conference on Domestic Violence. That is the field that he works in. And, um, and that our family is actively involved in um, here locally. And so he was presenting his paper with a colleague, a grad student who um, they wrote, published their research basically, I guess in February. And as a result of that publication, he, they were invited to speak at this thing. So, of course, we went. And, of course, he could not go to Norway alone. I had to tag along with him. <laughs> so we did that. Um, so the first half of our trip was getting to Norway, 
him doing the conference and then in the evenings, afternoons and evenings, we were able to do touristy things. Um, I had the pleasure of having so much downtime, <laughs> which was amazing. I feel like that's also a reason that I've had a little bit of a struggle getting back into the swing of my regular life because I had so much downtime that I feel like it's been very hard for me to get back into the crazy hectic schedule. Um, and then also I have been, I've had a cold since I returned. So, um, but other than that, it was the most amazing trip. I met some knitting friends. Um, I was just had so much fun meeting in person. Um, Lata, um, who is Oslo Knitter on Instagram, and that was amazing. I got to meet her in person. We are both um, mutual friends of Hohi, and she test knits for her a lot as well. And so Hohi sort of met, you know, got us hooked up and we were able to meet up in person and then um lata brought her friend tuva who is the design the designer the dyer behind norna yarn which is just the most beautiful hand dyed yarn company um if you are not familiar with either of them you should follow them on instagram and so, so i am hopefully have put their names here somewhere um, but we met, I guess it was Tuesday when we met up and we met at a yarn store at Verbit, 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 I don't, I obviously do not speak Norwegian and will not be able to say the names correctly, but it's, um, again, I will put it on the screen. Um, this was a small yarn store. Um, the front half of the shop is a shop and like for open to the public. And then the back half of the shop is actually her dye studio because she is a hand dyer and dyes um, exclusively on Norwegian wool. Gorgeous hand dyed yarn. And um, so that was really fun. <sighs> fun to be able to see her studio her shop to sit and knit with the Norwegian knitters. Josh walked me because it was a little bit of a walk. It was maybe 25 minutes from where we were staying. And so he walked me over there and then he walked around that area and just walked around and sights saw different things and whatever. And then we all went to dinner and while we were at dinner, um, we were told because it was such a gorgeously clear evening that we needed to go on an evening um, island ferry boat ride of the fjord of the Oslo fjord and so we did that Tuva um, took us on this ferry boat and we got to see the sunset she took us on a tour of the um, fortress that is right at the um, at the harbor in Oslo and it was just the most magical evening with knitting friends and with amazing food and scenery and it was just one of those evenings that I will remember forever and so that was a lot of fun. Um, the yarn stores that I went to kind of that first half of that week I purchased two different sweater quantities and I didn't bring them over here but um, I purchased this this is from, I think, Husfliden, Who, Husfeld, Hus, I don't remember the name of the store. But if you are in Oslo or have been to Oslo, it is at the bottom basement floor of the shopping mall area that's kind of in central downtown Oslo. Um, it's like the glass... I want to say, I keep call, wanting to call it glass work or something, but it's the bottom floor of that mall um, shopping center. And so I bought a sweater quantity of this yarn. I think I have six balls of it. And it's a very unique construction. It is alpaca and linen. So 48% baby alpaca, 8% wool, 44% linen. And you can see 
the glow of the linen underneath the alpaca. So I'm just so intrigued by this. So I have six balls of it, which is 300 grams. Um, 50 grams is 175 meters. So that means I have 350 times, I don't know, over a, a little over a thousand meters of this. And then I also bought two balls of this, and this is also a 50 gram ball, 130 meters. This is um, alpaca, surrey, wool, and nylon. And I got this one because this surrey is so fluffy. Um, both of these yarns are by Rauma. This is Rauma Iris. And this one is Rauma Alpaca Lin. And this one I thought would be a really fun accent in a shawl. Um, let's see if I can show you like one strand of it. But you can see just how much fluffier it is than most other Surrey. Like the hairs are really long, <laughs> which I think is super fun. Um, Yep, so that is some yarn that I got. And then I also went to a shop in a neighborhood, I guess it's called Grunerlaka, I think. Um, but I went to a shop called Pickles, which was super cute. And Pickles makes their own, all their yarn is their brand. And this is their Merino Tweed fingering weight. And it is a single ply tweed yarn. I got one ball of this natural color and the tweed in this is like browns and whites and kind of some golds. And then this, I got three or four balls of this one, I can't remember. But this is a tweed, same yarn base, um, but it is a kind of a brown, chocolate brown, with some pumpkin colors and some browns and some lighter colors and some golds for the tweedy bits. So I just thought those looked beautiful together. And then I also picked up one little 25, I think this is 25 grams. Does it say anything? Um, it doesn't say the grams, but it says 220 yards. Oh, it does say grams right here, 25 grams. So I just thought that it would be very fun to find a sweater where I could use all of these together because the colors just really screamed at me. Um, I'm really into browns and grays and mustards right now together and golds. So, so that, um, is something I purchased. Um, and that was, I guess all of that happened by Tuesday and then Wednesday, Josh and I went to, um, it was very rainy and, you know, we were prepared and we had umbrellas and rain jackets and all of that, but we went to go um, to a couple of parks and we went to Vigeland Sculpture Park um, which is it's a very famous um, sculptor in Norway and he really really enjoys sculpting naked people um, he's very famous his sculptures are super interesting to me um, I ha we bought this book I haven't even actually read all of it yet like apparently this is a super famous sculpture of a naked angry baby. So I need to do more reading about this guy. <laughs> but that was something that we did in the rain on Wednesday and that was just kind of a lazy day for us because it was Josh's first day that was totally schedule free for him that he wasn't working and um, we napped and went walked around the park and the rain and you know, did things like that. And then Thursday was a super exciting day. We slept in a bit and then we woke up and got, um, got ready and took a train about an hour 
hour to an hour and 15 minutes north of Oslo to a small village and we went and visited my friend Catherine who you may know as Bed of Roses on Instagram and was the most amazing day. So we had spent quite a few days in the city in Oslo at that point, which is very, that is very different than Josh and my um, regular life. And so um, we were quite ready for regular, everyday, normal, not city life, I guess. If you're in the city, that's your normal life. But for us, it was not normal. <laughs> So it was nice to see a slow living household and I, Catherine and I have been friends on Instagram for quite a number of years and so to meet her and we met her husband and her son and they fed us the most amazing meals and we drove around their town and kind of the town next to theirs and saw the largest lake in Norway and just so many beautiful things. We were maybe 20 miles, I don't know how many kilometers, but 20 or 30 miles away from Lillehammer, which was where Olympics were held, I guess in the 90s. So just so many fun things and visiting and it's always so great to see a person that you have never met before and then you get to meet after knowing each other online for so many years. So. She gifted me with way too many things. Um, she gifted me one of her beautiful necklaces and then of course personalized it. So all of these beautiful stones. Um, just gorgeous and I've been wearing it so much. Um, she gave me so many bags, it's crazy. With these whales on them that I absolutely love. And then one of her very most special handmade, like scrappy bags. I just love this so much. So it's linen and then she has just picked these little patches and sewn hand sewn you know, stitches and buttons and they're so beautiful. Everything that she does is gorgeous and the attention to detail is perfect. And then um, she gifted me some trim to put on the inside of a sweater because I was telling her that I wanted to make a Marius sweater one day. And then what I love the most, I feel like this is the most special to me, is she gifted me some hand knit by her mittens. I have never owned mittens. I have never owned hand knit mittens. So these are so special. Um, it is an alpaca blend and they are so warm and fuzzy. I cannot wait for warm weather or cold. <laughs> It is already warm weather. I cannot wait for cold weather to actually be able to wear these. But I just feel, I feel so special to have been gifted these items. I don't know the pattern, but it is beautiful, <laughs> whatever it is, and so soft, so. Um, I think maybe she said it was drops alpaca, but I am not sure. So that was, I mean, we spent so much time just sitting and visiting and knitting and eating and laughing and sharing about our cultures and our families. And it was just such a special time. So thank you, Catherine. I know that you're watching this. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Um, it was the most special day. So, um, okay. I don't want to get all teary again. Um, and then Friday, I, so basically long story short, the Oslo knitting festival was Friday, Saturday, and Sunday while we were there. I did not know this when we booked the trip. 
and if I had I would have booked our plane tickets for Sunday instead of Saturday but we were flying home on Saturday and um, you know the, that could not be changed um, I originally thought that I would be able to go to the festival on Friday but the festival was really only open for just a couple of hours in the evening as part of like a preview for volunteers and for there was a Stephen West talk and event. I did not know that at the time. You had to purchase tickets and I didn't. Um, but, and so I thought, well, I, I'm not gonna be able to go. The tickets were sold out. I'm not gonna be able to make it. But I, um, when we saw um, Lata and Tuva on Tuesday, Tuva was a vendor at the festival and she said, well, I have an extra pass that you can come and help us set up and then you're in. And I just thought, oh my gosh, if there's anything I know how to do, it is set up for a yarn festival. So I'm happy to do that. And Josh and I um, went to the museum and helped them set up and got to tour the museum. And so I got to go just walk around for just an hour or so at the festival and it was amazing. It was so, so cool to see completely new vendors that people that I excuse me oh, that I have never seen before in real life if you can believe it I purchased no yarn there I had already purchased those two quantities of yarn and I thought okay Diane you can stop and the one thing I did purchase and it's still in the packaging even I purchased a Plystra, I think that's how you say it, I'm not really sure, um, Plystra bag. And this was the color that she released as part of the special, um, this has the leather all over the back, um, special Oslo colorway. And then I think it's available to the public now as well, but um, I can say that it was released at Oslo and that's where I got it. Um, but this is the Knitter's Project bag. And I have this bag in the dusty pink that I purchased earlier this year or last year. I can't remember exactly when, but I love it so much. Um, oh my gosh, that's so funny. Just in a little bit of time, how much softer and how much um, darker this leather has become. Oh, I love it. Oh wow, that makes me love this even more. Oh, that's so exciting. Um, so anyway, this is the older bag and this is the newer bag. If you can see the leather changing, that's always so fun. So anyway, I had that bag and I knew I liked it and I just thought, you know what? I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna treat myself to this one that is my um, souvenir from that trip. I love the color. It's perfect for fall and winter and it will be great. So now I'm really excited to get this broken in and it'll be nice and soft like um, like my existing bag. That's what I purchased at the Oslo Yarn Festival. Um, the last thing that I want to talk about is shop news, up and coming schedule. <laughs> my, my little girl here, <laughs> my Sophie dog, has just, just walked in and is hanging out with me. Um, so I leave on Wednesday, which is two days from today, Wednesday the 18th, to fly up to um, Illinois to go to the um, Leading Men Fiber Arts Knitting at the Estate Retreat. I'm attending the full retreat and then I'm vending on Saturday. I think it's from 1 to 4, something like that, and it's open to the public. So. It should be a fun event. I'm very excited. I have a small, um, the vendors are, you know, we only have like a six foot table or something. So it's not a very big or stressful event to vend, which is very exciting to me. There's no big setup or anything like that. I'm just bringing whatever I can throw on a table. I've already mailed it to Illinois. Um, so that's really exciting. Um, yeah, so I'm doing that this week. I fly back on Sunday, then I'm home for a week, week and a half, 
and then I fly out to Knit City in Canada and again that is so exciting so um, I just have a lot of things coming up after that I'm home for a while um, I have one couple of shows um, later this year one in November and one in December but they are not big flying away shows they're in Texas half a day a drive away so that's really great and then um, yeah the next year is going to be much slower so um, I'm very excited about that I'm not taking on any trunk shows or other big adding any additional shows next year um, I'm sort of planning for my kids being more involved in school and sports and all the things and going to focus on the online shop and being around my family a lot more. Um, the last two years have been very busy travel focused and I am really excited to get to focus on my family. So that's really exciting. Um, so anyway, that's basically what I have for shop news. Um, there are some things in the shop now. There will be some things that I add over, you know, the next week or two as shows come in and out and I pop things in and out. Custom orders are always open. They may take a week or two longer than normal. It's probably a four, three to four week turnaround time for customs right now, but if you're not in a major hurry, then I'm happy to dye you up exactly what you would like. So thank you so much for supporting me and watching the show, and I will see you soon. Bye!